Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. Um, this is episode number 984, 984 in case you're keeping track. And today we'll talk about the idea of um, inherited relationships, I'll say it that way. There's a mindset a lot of people carry which you have to, you're basically going to end up in the same sort of relationship your parents were in, and that's not true. In fact, you don't have to have a relationship like your parents. You don't have to end up like the way they did theirs, if it's not one you want it to be like, let's be clear, and I'll explain that in a moment. You actually have free choice to do what you want if you take ownership, and I'll explain that as well. So I talked before about how we have this tendency to pick up programming from our parents when we're kids without knowing it. And it's not not like they go, you're going to think this way. <laughs> At least not, most parents are not like that. But when we're very young, especially three, four, five years old, where we don't have the faculty to go, that's right, that's wrong about relationships, maybe about playing in the dirt or something else you might have right wrong about, but relationships we don't. At that age, we're very young, we don't think of these things. But we do, um, what's the word looking for? We, um, we're like a sponge in a way. We take in what's around us. We absorb, that's a pretty better word. We absorb how people do relationship by what we watch around us, and particularly those closest to us, like our parents. So for most of us, we have inherited patterns, unbeknownst to ourselves, because it's all subconscious, that the way our parents demonstrated relationship to each other and to us became the way we believe, subconsciously, Relationships will act, excuse me, relationships will be for us as an adult. And especially when we reinforce that belief by having relationships that match that paradigm, then we're sitting there going, I don't want to be like that, but I'm still doing it. I don't know what to do differently. That's where I come in. <laughs> well, somebody like me. But what I'm trying to explain to you, and if, if that was a brief um, synopsis, Cliff Notes version of what I talk about in greater depth in my other talks, and I'll tell you when you find the replays at the back end, by the way. But the thing is, if you're in a place where you realize that's what's going on for you, that you're actually choosing relationships without intentionally doing so, perhaps subconsciously, that match that of your parents. Now, let me just flip the script completely on that for a second. Because for some people, their relationships, their parents' relationship, their parental relationship, the relationship their parents had in front of them, was so amazing they've been trying to achieve it ever since and never have. And that's a little different issue, and I'll talk about that differently in a second. I think. We'll see. So, let me, so this is primarily speaking to those people whose relationship their parents had wasn't ideal. Maybe their parents got divorced when they were young, or there was alcoholism in the family, or one of them cheated on the other one, or there was abuse, other things like that. Often, and unfortunately, there's a lot of that in, in the history of most people I know of, especially my clients. I'm not saying my clients have to have that, but it seems to happen a lot. So the fear that they carry is they don't want to repeat that cycle again. They don't want to be in a relationship where their partner's going to cheat on them, or they're going to cheat on their partner. They don't want to be in a relationship where there's going to be abuse or addiction or something else. They want a happy, healthy relationship. At least most people want that. But the thing is, they don't always get it. And that's the reason why they don't get it. It's because they're running beliefs and programming below the conscious mind. Well, back here somewhere in the subconscious mind. That are overriding their intentional choices. So if you've noticed, you've said, I want to have this great relationship. It's going to have this happen and this happen and this happen. But what we end up with is not that. This could be why. And the, cha the clarity of this is understanding is that you need to take ownership, as I mentioned in the title. And taking ownership is not so much like, I'm going to take charge of my life. It's more about taking ownership of your own mental faculty. Specifically, you've got to be willing to look at your past and your family upbringing and see where you've got attachments to it. Now, that's also judgments and perceptions and resentment, all these other things too. But the thing that's going on is that you're still running this automatic program, as I mentioned. And truly the only way to change that, really, I'm aware, well, no, 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 let me back up a second, only, tends to be the main reason, excuse me, the way, way to resolve this, is actually go back into your history, to go back at your childhood, which I mean say, and look at your parents' relationships, and look at it clearly, because we all carry a um, perspective of relationship that we've got in our memories that may not be the full spectrum of what happened. Like I said before, we're still in one of my client, one of the clients, and I also had this experience myself. All right, let me explain my own family dynamic just so, and I've talked about this before, so it's not like it's a unknown topic. But it gives you this the, the reason why I say remember the way things are. Because the thing is, we oftentimes don't remember consciously the way things were when we were children. So I know, and I said this before in my talk, so you know my own background. In my, I was raised in a very stoic English family, hence the accent. <laughs> but also meant that we didn't express very emotionally. So my family's dynamic was very flatlined in some ways 
just the way it was. We were just nice. We were nice people. At least I like to think we're nice people, but we weren't expressive very much. And in my early dating life, around my late teens, early twenties, every relationship I got into, which would last about three months every time, or less sometimes, wasn't very experienced at this stuff, but they would end the same way every single time. Each single relationship, the girl I was dating and myself would get into an argument or something like that. She would get upset with me or I would get upset, resentful, or something like that would happen and she would break up with me. And it would be her breaking up with me because I didn't have the faculty, the skills, or the, or the ownership to leave her. But the reason why we were leaving, why there was a breakup, was because of this argument and I had basically turned off once that happened. I'd shut down completely after it happened. Now, again, I didn't know at the time why I was doing it. I just knew it was the right thing to do. At least that was the belief I was running because that's the way it felt familiar. And this all ties back into my upbringing for my family, so I'll explain that. And then you can maybe overlay this with your own experience of your dating life, maybe in your 20s and 30s, maybe now, that correlates the same way with your parents' upbringing or your upbringing with your parents. So when I was looking at what happened, I was clear that for me, the arguments were something that didn't fit in a loving relationship. Arguing, raised voices, getting out of hand, having a really abrupt, abrasive connection with partner was not right for me, according to what I was raised with. Because in my family, according to my memory, this is the piece I want to mention to you, according to my memory, there was no arguments in my family. Now, there probably were arguments in the family, but what I remembered was there weren't any. So I either suppressed them, ignored them, I didn't think about them as being upsets. But I know pretty much my family didn't have major rows. It was always like, either work things out or stuff them down, to be transparent. Yes, that was two ways of doing things. Which meant any relationship I'd gone into had to do the same thing. So an argument was the opposite of that. And so every relationship would end with an argument, meaning the argument would happen and I shut down and quit and my partner would leave. It was automatic every single time. Thankfully, in my late 20s, I started learning some things about myself and about life and other things through personal growth. And that's been my journey from then until now, where I've become pretty facile in the understanding of how relationships work and don't work. But one of the biggest keys I know in this one I'm talking about here is that what I was doing in my early dating life was absolutely based upon what I remember my parents' relationship to be like. Now, looking back, there's certain parts of my, my parents' relationship I absolutely adore and love. They were loyal, they were together for basically 60 years till my mother passed away. Which is something I haven't achieved and I probably won't achieve now because I don't think I've got 60 more years on the planet. But I do understand that as part of the ideal I had. At the same time, even that ideal worked against me in my dating life. So you may have had something like that yourself, or perhaps you had experiences in your relationships, excuse me, in your parental upbringing that wasn't as ideal as that. And again, I'm not saying it was ideal, just my memory was saying it was. But perhaps you're bringing forward or you're understanding now your own upbringing was tumultuous or challenging. Maybe, again, maybe there was divorce early on, or there was abuse, something else. All those things will influence your adult dating relationship experience. And what tends to happen is we, we, I include myself because I've done the same thing, will repeat the same cycle that was in the experience of my parents' upbringing, parents bringing me up, your upbringing with your parents, sorry, that way around, that will affect your dating life. Your date relationships, your experiences, and maybe even marriages will end up reflecting what happened early on. And I've seen it happen so many times, it's almost, it's almost like I can tell what the parents' relationship was like because of the way they were. Maybe they got divorced three times. It's funny enough, maybe, maybe their, one of their, their parents did too. It's like that sort of thing becomes extremely weird, but, but telling of how people's life relationship experience was. Not easy, I understand. But it's one of the biggest pieces you have to work out and get the um, understanding of, to take ownership of, as I said in the title, so you can be free to love again the right way. Meaning that if you want to have a different relationship experience than you've had up to this point, this is the, this is the, the fork in the road, so to speak. The choice point of where you go forward from here. Because one part is just doing this, just hoping for something different, doing the same thing again and again, hoping for a different result. And that is the definition of insanity, according to Albert Einstein. You think again, doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results. The other path on the fork takes you towards the journey where you start looking at yourself honestly and authentically in the mirror. Meaning that you look at yourself and start going into a deeper understanding of who you are, what makes you, what makes you who you are, and what your family's upbringing was like. When you're willing to face that truth, and it may be hard to look at, I understand. That's one reason I do my work, is because I create, I create a space safe of love and compassion for my clients, because sometimes it's not a pretty path to go back to that place in their lives. But I know fully 
when they do go back there, when they do go back to that childhood and look at their upbringing and realize that, first of all, to be clear, as a child, this is one of the things, this can be obvious sidebar, <laughs> some things happen sometimes with our parents where we think as five-year-olds, we think we can fix it. You may have this experience yourself. Maybe there was going to be an upset and a discord and they're going to get divorced. And oftentimes what children do, maybe you're not you, maybe it wasn't me because maybe I was thinking of divorce, but we ideal other things. Maybe you did too. But what happens is that children take on the responsibility for their parents' um, discord. So many people I know, and you may know, you may know people like this too, as well, maybe not yourself, but maybe people you know, who still carry a belief inside from when they were five, six years old that somehow the divorce was their fault or the divorce was their responsibility for their parents breaking up. Now, I don't say you should go out and talk to your friends like this, but the truth is going to be like this. If you do find out, you'll find out from friends, and maybe you look at your own experience if you were from a divorced family, that do you carry some sort of belief that your or you were at four or five years old when it happened, somehow responsible for the divorce? 99% of the time, it ain't true. 90% of the time, those divorces aren't because of the kids. In fact, it's normally the kids keep them together. So, first of all, that belief is false. Now, I can't say for everybody it's true, but I'm just presuming for most people watching this video, maybe you in particular, that any blame you place on yourself for what happened to your family is um, misplaced. It's not up to you to fix that. It is up to you to fix yourself. That's why I talked about taking ownership and really learning how you can change your relationship experience. And it is that pivotal to understand that. This is not the usual love coaching stuff you'll hear from love coaches. Most of them are like, we'll just give you a better date Facebook, oh, sorry, excuse me, a better dating profile or have you dating more people. That's what matchmakers do. Some of the cheap ones do anyway. So they'll put you on 10 dates a month until you face your inner history and you make peace with your childhood. Doesn't matter what you do out in the world, it will not fix it. I can promise you that. Not as a threat, but as an understanding of how the psychological mindset works, how we work, how we function inside. Now the good news is, as I've already told you, is that you can find a way out, which is to make peace with your childhood. It's to resolve those thoughts inside, to start changing the beliefs you carry from your younger years so that you can be free once and for all. Now, this one I'm telling you is not 100%, 100% match for everything that happens in your life, but it is a general alignment to what happens. There may be exceptions to the rule. There are, I mean, I know my brother and I have different paths in our relationship history. Same parents, just different, par different paths. But there's some commonalities in there too that I know about. So for you in your relationships and for your history with your parents, first of all, just start noticing the parallels, noticing the coincidences, so we say, where maybe if you're a woman, your partner or your man, if, let's, do, let's, do, let's, let's make it simple. It's about straight relationships for the sake, but it works in gay ones too. But say you're a woman and you're with a man and the man you're with has been saying things to you or doing things that remind you of your father or perhaps of your mother, it could be either way. That's a first step. And if you're a guy dating a woman, maybe she's doing the same thing for you that your parents did. If that's not working for you, I invite you to reach out to me and talk to me because I can see through this stuff clear enough and I can help you navigate this to find a way through to your truth and to claim ownership of your life and to choose healthy relationships going forward. It really is that possible. So if you are fed up repeating the same thing again and again, expecting a different result, uh, 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 to quote our Einstein again, then make a different choice. Change your path. You have, you have possibility of doing that, you have responsibility to do that, and you have the ownership of your path to do that with. I'm going to put two links in the comments for you to help you with this. One will be a chat with me. You can book us, you can just schedule a conversation with me as a gift from me to you. So we can talk about this. If this resonates for you, please do that. Don't, don't skate over this one. To do the work, step into this. Secondly, as a reminder, because I'm talking about this all the time, part of the ownership is you need to start taking care of yourself more. Now, you may be taking, yourself, taking care of yourself at the gym, maybe taking care of yourself at your diet. I'm talking about taking care of yourself emotionally. Because most people don't do that. In fact, most people tend to, sh tend to shy away or ignore that. And go, I'm just going to go and work out at the gym. I'm going to be healthy and I'll take care of myself and I'll go drink the right drinks and eat the right food and you know be paleo or vegan or whatever it is. But until you work with your emotional self and you get that healthy, life can never, can never get really as good as it could be. So check the link in the comments, but also the second one I put in the comments is my self-love meditation. 
My guided meditation works because it takes you to a simpler place where you can find inside yourself the place that loves. And you can connect to that and start amplifying and expanding that so it fills you completely. It's a simple idea, but it will transform your life, especially if you do it every day. My invitation in the guidebook that goes with the two audio meditations, an AM one and a PM meditation, is to practice for 30 days. Some people do it much longer than that, it's up to you. But do 30 days for a start and see what happens. It will change your life for the better. So check out the links in the comments for those two. Um, and if this provoked anything for you, let me know. I'd like to hear what you're thinking about this topic in particular. If you have any questions, you can, you can DM, me, DM, me over, DM me over social media, or you can fill out that link in the comments. Um, but don't just sit on it. Please take ownership of your own life and your own choices. It isn't up to some fluke of nature. You have control and you have dominion when you're willing to choose it. Take conscious ownership of your life and see what happens. Again, I can help you with that. So that is about it. I think that's going to summarize my topic for today. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way, in case you haven't seen my talks before. I do this seven days a week on my personal page on Facebook, at least to the end of the month, because that'll be my thousandth broadcast. Um, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, usually, on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Join me live anytime. Well, at 5 p.m. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do have an archive of my replays. I keep, I keep them, first of all, on my business page on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash barryselby.author, where you can find me there. And you can watch and um, peruse all those topics. You can comment, etc. through those as well. Although Facebook doesn't show all of them. It's only showing about two or 300 out of the 960 plus, 980 plus, excuse me. So I have a backup plan. Literally, I back my videos up to YouTube, where I know I can keep them safe. So if you, go to my, if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby and subscribe to my channel, there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where every single one of these talks is saved, archived, and available for replay. You can search through the titles, keywords, whatever you like to find what you're looking for, and uh, perhaps get some inspiration. So that's about it. I thank you for watching again. Check out the links in the comments. They are worth your while to invest your time, your effort, and in one case, some money. Um, with that, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.